Me as a man, I do often is I try and shield everybody from all the burdens and barriers that I went through the week, the month, the mm-hmm. years, so that I can just show up in this shiny, mm-hmm. bright figure. But maybe I think it does a mm-hmm. disservice to people to really not fully see me, like to not mm-hmm. fully know that we're so much more human than we often get permission mm-hmm. to be, that I give mm-hmm. myself permission to be. So I want to be the prime example of what it means to be a good man in the world. And I want to ignore the fact that I've been just going through bumps and bruises all week long. I want to spare everyone That's from those problems. My name is Ashanti and welcome to the Taking Off the Mask podcast where men get real. Men of all ages and all backgrounds come to this space to talk about these masks we wear. The front of the mask are the things that we gladly let the world see. The things that we may talk about a lot or we really enjoy that people learn and see about us. And the back of the mask are the things that are sometimes hard to talk about. Maybe we don't have anybody to talk about them with. Maybe we want to, but we haven't created that circle of friends around us. Maybe if yourself, ask yourself, what are the things that you're talking about a lot? What are the things that you're sharing with the world? And maybe you can also just think about those things that you don't talk about much at all. That's the mask. Today, sharing his mask is Solomon Adams. Solomon is a musician, he's a creator, he's a poet, he's a DJ, an educator. Uh, I mean, I want to imagine... When we think about a creator, someone who um, goes into their mind and heart to come out with things, like we may wonder, where do people come up with these songs from? Where do people come up with these ideas from? Where do people come up with these amazing lyrics from? And I imagine as we've learned the stories of many in the past, like they've come through their own experiences. They've come through their own journey. They've, they've come through their own lived world experience that sometimes has to get told in a way that people can accept it. It's like, how do I tell you a story about what I've been through and enough truth and vulnerability that you can handle it? Maybe you can't handle the full story. Maybe I have to package my vulnerability. That's what we talk about in this conversation. Solomon and I um, have this conversation about these masks we wear. And uh, I first learned about him on social media. He had completed a men's weekend. And that weekend, he made a reflection about it. And I was like, that was so powerful. He had had this transformational experience that I resonated with because I remember when I did my first men's weekend back in 2004. And since 2004, I've done many men's weekends. And sometimes I have a right away epiphany or a new experience. And sometimes it takes a little longer to grow into what transformed over that weekend. Maybe let me, let me try something with you. As you're listening to this, just maybe just take a deep breath. I want to get you out of your thinking mind and into your feeling body. And if I want you to just take a breath and just take a deep breath in and breathe out. I want you to just notice your body. Just just take a moment to notice. If you're driving or something, if you're in a not safe place, don't close your eyes. But if you can close your eyes, close them. Like notice your elbow. Maybe notice your arm. Maybe your shoulder. Maybe notice your back. What about your feet? As I name these body parts, as you may let your mind go to experience all those body parts, how do you feel? How, how are they feeling? Maybe you had an ache in one or an itch in one or something was not the way it normally is. But imagine in that moment, while I was trying to walk you through an experience, my attention was fully on you. Like fully on you. And Ideally, you were taking time to breathe in and take a mind to be focused on yourself. What if as a kid you did that? What if your role as a kid growing up was to always be wondering and worrying about the adults around you? To never be able to focus on your own needs, but really always trying to take care of the needs of those around you. I, I imagine that could cause some of your needs to go unfulfilled. 
in this conversation, we're going to talk about Solomon, how he has grown up and how, how he navigates through chaos very smoothly. And he names it, it being young, growing up and having to try and keep everybody else happy around him, learning that skill early, taking care of others' needs, taking care of their um, moments of difficulty trying to keep everybody smiling, happy all the time, how that can sometimes affect us as well. I hope you really enjoy this conversation. I think there's so many nuggets in here for those of us that had grew up like that. And for those of us who are raising kids and maybe we're not mindful that they're trying to protect our feelings at all times. They're trying to protect our emotions at all times. And maybe we can just be paying more attention to those things. Maybe you're a teacher and constantly your students are tiptoeing around you because they know that they make you mad that it's going to be bad for everybody. <laughs> I mean, I've been, I've been that teacher a couple of times, but I had students that would come in the morning. They would do the, the, the status check. They'd be like, let me see how Mr. Branch is doing today. And they would walk in on Monday morning and they'd be like, you in a bad mood? And I'd be like, what? what are you talking about? Like, you look like you're in a bad mood. I, I ain't no bad mood. I'm in here trying to get ready for class. All right. I'm just checking. And then they would go outside, and I, I imagine they would like, go past the word. No, he's good today. He's good today. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't know if that's why they did that, but I, but I would know that there was, there was her name was Natasha. I'll never forget her. She would always come in in the morning asking me a bunch of questions. And I think she was like the, the messenger to the rest of the class. Okay, he, he's, he's good today, right? I don't know. Maybe think about how that shows up around in you and your life, too. I hope you enjoy this conversation with Solomon Adams. I hope you enjoy um, his um, his soothing voice. That's what I, I took away from this conversation and just listening to him, his calming uh, way that he speaks really um, caused me to really enjoy being in this conversation with him. And stay tuned because he's working on some projects that I think you would be interested in. So thank you for being a part of the Taking Off the Mask podcast. Listen, um, we just got back from South by Southwest, and we had a phenomenal experience. You'll be hearing that episode pretty soon. um, But I want you to know that our young men, eight of them, did a phenomenal job in Austin, Texas, um, during the EDU South by Southwest conference. It was really beautiful. And I hope that you will see some of the content that we are putting out around that on Instagram and uh, Facebook, social media that you check it out, that you give a comment, celebrate those young men who were representing our work, representing this mask movement, and then inviting people to the live show that we did on stage at South by Southwest EDU. So uh, thank you for being a part of the journey with us. And we are so excited that you will tell somebody about it. Tell somebody to make a mask, invite them, that you will make a mask at millionmask.org. And we look forward to seeing you. If we don't see you live, we hope to see you at our 20th anniversary celebration in May, May 25th, 2024. You can participate live here in the Bay Area at San Lorenzo High School, or you can um, participate anywhere in the world using Strava. And um, you can sign up and Strava will track your 5K. That's 3.11 miles. And you can support this work that we're doing. Um, Maybe take a couple of friends out, go for a hike, go for a walk, go for a bike ride. Support this work that we're doing around the world um, by just doing something for yourself. That's a win-win, I think, right? Take care, folks. Have a great day. Bye now. Solomon, brother, it is so glad to have you. Welcome to the Taking Off the Mask podcast. Shanti, it's a pleasure, man. You know, I think um, behind the scenes, you know, what 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 we were just talking about before I hit record, I was like, there's so much happening behind the scenes oftentimes that people never know, right? And so... We show up and we we do our we do our show right and then we're like yeah that was great and then we put the production together and it was and no one has no one is the, the wiser and I think that may be something that we probably in society definitely I know as me as a man I do often is I try and shield everybody from all the burdens and barriers that I went through the week the month the year mm-hmm. the years so that I can just show up in this shiny mm-hmm. bright figure. But maybe I think it does a disservice mm-hmm. to people to really not fully see me, like to not mm-hmm. fully know that we're so much more human than we often get permission mm-hmm. to be, that I that I give mm-hmm. myself permission to be. So I want to be the the prime example of what it means to be a good man in the world. 
And I want to ignore the fact that I've been just going through bumps and bruises all week long. You know, I want to spare everyone Thank from those problems. Thank you for being patient with us in this uh, tech experience so far. I, f I feel it solidified our connection, but um, we're, we're going to jump in right now. Indeed. Will you tell folks what you want them to know about you? And then we're going to jump into the masks. I want to make sure that we get to hear fully from you in this time. Yeah, lovely. Cool. So my name is Solomon Adams. I'm an artist and educator based in London, England, the United Kingdom. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to the conversation, looking forward to spending this time with you, this time that we have, unpacking masculinity and just delving deep, man. Just delving deep. Man, well, I'm excited to do it. Let's Now, with the mask, you as a guest get to decide who goes first, either you go first or you want me to go first, but um, you get to Ooh. choose. So whatever Ooh. you choose, we'll, we'll roll with that. I'll go first, man. Yeah, I'll okay. go first. I'm so go so first. um, yeah. fold, fold the mask so that you just show the front first. Is this right here. <laughs> hey. mm. yeah. I don't know if you can see the words there. There we go. Yeah. Tell, tell us, tell us the words and tell us about them. What you, what do you want us to know yeah. about? Them? Yeah. So the three words that I put, the qualities that I tend to like to show or qualities that people tend to see a lot from me are adaptability, my optimism and my calmness. And yeah, I was doing some work, I was doing some, some real inner work while I was thinking about this and just really thinking about how I show up in life when I show up at work, how I show up in relationships, whether that's business relationships, whether that's personal relationships, whether that's at the gym. And it's just, yeah, there's always a willingness kind of to be flexible, to adapt to different situations, to adapt to different circumstances and always, you know, be cool with that, be okay, you know, with whatever change is happening and to remain optimistic. I've got friends of mine, I've got a friend of mine who I haven't seen in a while, I've spoken to in ages, um, I hope he's well, that always used to ask me like how I would remain so optimistic, even in situations and moments where, you know, it was, things were tragic, you know, things were tragic, things were not going well, and I would be the person to be like, could it get worse, <laughs> could be worse, you know what I mean, it could be worse, and I'd always be smiling and just like finding the joy in the moment or making a joke out of it and just finding a way to like find the optimistic point of view in it, and I guess that connects with the calmness as well, being calm, being centered, being grounded, I think, you know, in order to, to make it through this world as a man, I've had to remain calm in situations which have been highly triggering and stressful and have activated all sorts of different emotions within me. And remaining calm has been key to just making, making it through, really, to just making it through, to just getting through certain situations, getting through certain things that could have wiped me out, you know, spiritually, physically, mentally and even though some things have wiped me out physically mentally and spiritually it's been the calmness has been finding that calmness again which has helped me come back to myself and find myself again and start building myself up again when I have fallen off or I have tripped up and fallen and not been the person that I know myself to be with all these high expectations I can have for myself man thank you for that that I have a couple of questions that came up, but I, but I want to uh, let me let me just let me let me share my front of mask, and then maybe you, I'll, I'll ask you a couple of questions about the front mm. because I really appreciate what you just said. I, actually, maybe just ask the question first, just to be safe before I forget it. Like when you, what did you tell your friend when he asked you, "How do you stay so optimistic in moments that are like things are, are falling around you?" Right? How do you how do you find yourself? Like what did you what did you, what did you tell him? Maybe uh, that's the what did you what did you say? How did how do you respond to that answer? Or what is the answer to that? Like how do you stay calm yeah. when chaos yeah. is happening around you? What what <sighs> early experiences have Man. given you that ability to do that? I think I'm just. I, it's funny. I want to say like I'm wired that way. There's a reason why I would say I'm wired that way. I think I went through certain experiences as a child that. You know, seeing people unhappy around me, seeing family members unhappy, seeing the stress of, you know, what people would have to go through who are close to me, I would, I would always want to just be able to find the joy, find the happiness, find the peace, mm -hmm. you know, create the peace, because that wasn't something I was seeing, and and I was a very sensitive child, you know, if 
you know, people weren't showing me exactly what they were feeling internally. I could feel it, you know, I could sense it. And I think that kind of, yeah, that definitely, as I, as I grew up, it just became the person who shines, you know, who shines through the darkness, who wants to, you know, be the light, who wants to, you know, be, yeah, just be happy, you know, in order to kind of keep the sadness at bay and to not really deal with that, that stuff um, and to not really hold on to that. Yeah, so that's, yeah, it's a quality in which, you know, the optimism and being optimistic, all of that type of stuff is, it, it's almost hiding something else, you know, that's why I call it the mask, you know, it's hiding something else, it's there, it's there to mask the sadness, you know. When I was younger, I trained as an actor, and I always think of those two masks, when you think about like the drama, you think about drama, you see the two masks, and one mask is like the happiness, one is the sad, you know, You're like, oh, okay, cool, you know, it's two roles, it's like two different, you know, roles, you know, and I think about being an actor, two different roles, and um, what role feels most comfortable? Some might feel more comfortable with the sadness, might feel more comfortable, you know, sitting in that sadness. I definitely felt more comfortable being happy and and trying to show happiness because I guess that had a positive impact, that could have a positive impact, or I thought that might have a positive impact on other people. Yeah. Um, but I didn't really realise until recently the negative impact that was having on me when I was really going through some horrible situations and some real difficult challenges you know yeah. trying to show myself as positive and optimistic and happy wasn't wasn't helping especially when i was going through challenges so yeah man thank you and i imagine because i have not done the inside circle work that you did and how we met i imagine mm -hmm. there was opportunity in there to like name for yourself those creations you had to create to keep yourself safe or keep yourself well or what, however you defined on why those characters you had to put on i imagine the weekend tapped into some of those things I, it's from what i know about eldra and his work his deep work it's that part of like our soul right like we we did what we did to survive we had to we had to there were certain characters we had to put on. If if everyone around me is, is stressed and worried and sad, I, I gotta somebody gotta lighten the mood. So I'm gonna be the one. Even though, right? And even though they're not talking about it, I can feel it when you talked about that. I, I resonate with that a lot. Um like, like feeling other people's stuff. Mm. Like, why am I feeling this? Like, what's going on? How do I how do I know that people over there, like, you know, two, three tables away are having an argument? I, I why how how do I even notice that, right? How do I notice these mm. things that I'm not looking for? Sometimes the soul of people are it's there our energy connects to those things that are that we're gifted to maybe even serve or help or understand. Like, oh, I can see pain. I know what pain looks like. I know what fear and sadness looks like. I know what it looks like when no one's talking about it. And so I just hold space for that. I'm just, you know, and and so I, I, th I thank you. Thank you for that. I'm, I'm going to share mine, and then I'm going to jump. I want to jump into the back. So I want to make sure we have uh, plenty of time to yeah. hear your back. Um, mm. So this is uh, my creation from this morning. The, the ma it's a, it's a mask I'm creating, but um, this is the the first part of it. But um, I'll tell you more about it. It's a, there's an M here for 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 the million, and then these mm -hmm. are parts of other M's. I'm, I'm still working on that design, but um, today the words are excited, passionate and caring and i think excited and passion are probably the same word but i don't know i'm sure maybe because it's the beginning of the year i got all this juice and energy and or maybe i'm expected to have all this juice and energy i have not i don't think i've posted on instagram at all this year not because i don't want to because i'm like what am i supposed to say for this first post of 2024 <laughs> and while i'm overthinking what i'm supposed to say i'm basically i have not said anything i'm like and so it's that moment of like I should just put a post out that sounds so exciting. And then I'm like, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, how much of this am I, how much this year am I going to be as much authentic as I can be, as I can handle, as I think people can handle too? Because sometimes people can't really handle all of our authenticity, you know? So we may have to give out doses at a time so that they can take it in. Mm. Uh, that's what I feel I have to do. I feel like I have to sometimes 
Don't be too silly right now. Don't be silly. People don't want to see you being silly. You're supposed to be a professional. Don't be sad because you're supposed to be this tough man that's doing this work and helping others. No one wants to hear your problems. And so I've always like everything, everything I feel, I'm trying to figure out, am I feeling too much? Am I showing too much of how I feel? And those are the, those are the internal questions. There's nobody asking me those questions on the outside. It's, it's my own internal voice that keeps me thinking about that. So that's what I'm doing my best to show today. Excited, passionate, and caring. I, I, I don't think I have to work hard to show caring. I think sometimes in the passion and in the excitement, it's it's all caring in there. Even if when I'm like getting on one of you know one of my the young men in our work, if I'm getting on their case about something, like it's because I care. But it also may come out like a little bit heightened energy level, right? <laughs> Which could be seen as like aggressive or anger or whatever. But it's more like I want you to be safe. I want you to be received well by others. And so sometimes I'm having to out. You know, I'm I'm doing my best to like deliver a message to you that is also out of love and care, but also lets you be fully you, you know? So yeah, that, those, that's the front. That's what's happening on the front. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. what you said about the feelings. I love what you said about the feelings, man. It's, it's, um, it's the, the thinking brain and the feeling brain or the, the thinking brain and the feeling body. Mm. You know? And the fact that we, sometimes we can be so cut off from our feelings that we're so much in our heads you know it's almost like we're, we're chopped off you know from the head like everything we're just moving around the world like in this part of our body and not really in the rest of our body you know our lower body and like you know I often <laughs> start to ask people you start to ask people a question of like how do you how does your elbow feel right now you know like how does your you know your calf feel right now you know I mean like what emotion might you leave you know if, if they were feeling a certain emotion what emotion would you say they, they feel right now you know it's like we can be so cut off we can be so much here mm. thinking about everything and trying to process and overthink and, da, 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 da. and it's like through through dancing and through somatic work i've just been able to really just like understand the power of just like feeling man yeah when we feel so we're, we're open you know we're open and we can really just like tune into what's actually happening as opposed to what we want to be happening i like yeah. that the tune in to tune in i'm, I'm going to come back to that because i think that's a powerful thing to name those i mean it's just a it's, a, it's actually a presence it's like a, a moment of like you know personal meditation right like to just say mm. Okay, what is happening in my body right now? What am I feeling? What 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 is it? What is it? What is it? If it had a name, if it had a feeling, what would it be called? Right? I think um, it's a powerful, it's a pra- just a practice, just to think about, right? Like mm. definitely, as I think about young people and giving them room to describe words, right? Describe thoughts and feelings, and put words to feelings and things like that. So yeah, mm-hmm. okay. So that's the front, and now mm-hmm. we're gonna. Now, because we're we're gonna let's let's do the back. Let's do the back. I'm gonna have you go to the back, and then we'll go from there. Okay. You, yeah, whatever you feel comfortable sharing there from the back. All right, cool. So we've got we've got anger, rage, irritability, and real vulnerability. Like real vulnerability. I've got four there: we've got anger, rage, irritability, and real vulnerability. And I guess like anger, rage, irritability. I've kind of like put a slash. For each of those thinking that they're all very similar you know kind of as i was like thinking through them today this morning and yesterday and the day before as i was like planning to get this done anger is not something which i like often will show or will like to show because of yeah i guess i guess there's that fear of being judged as angry as being labeled as angry and the negative connotations that can come with that, that can come when the anger is not controlled or expressed in an effective way or in a healthy way. There have been moments where I've lost my top (laughs) figuratively, you know, in professional situations, in personal situations where I felt I've been crossed or disrespected or something has happened, which is wrong. And Anger has come along. <laughs> it's almost like the story of anger has come along to allow me to express myself, mm-hmm. to let people know 
you can't do this or you can't behave like that or you can't treat me like that or you can't speak like that right now you know there's a certain aggression or a certain level of vim or vigor that comes through there that yeah that when it's not channeled appropriately can be very destructive um very very destructive and very very dangerous mm. um so yeah that's one thing that i tend to not show along with yeah and i guess that anger can kind of cross into rage and have to be aware that when i'm feeling the anger that might then link into rage i might you know i'm very cautious of taking out you know my negative emotions or my anger on anybody who might not deserve that i don't think anybody really deserves to feel the full weight of my rage and my anger you know i don't think mm. anybody deserves that and then on the on the most minor level there's like the minor level there's irritability you know there's a small little things which kind of just like pick at you like each and every day you know that just build up that just build up that just build up that just build mm. up each and every day kind of goes along and i'm not like if, if i don't deal with those things that can then lead to the rage that can then lead to the anger that just the destruction the you know the behavior that might just be just like whoa where did that come from kind of thing you know and i've seen the transition or i've seen people look at me in very different ways when like i'll go from being the person that people know as being very calm you know that front of the mask stuff that calmness that optimism you know that that flexible to just being like <laughs> you know that transition you know sometimes people are like whoa but with the people who have seen both of those sides of me i'm glad that they have and i tend to have great relationships with people like that who have seen that and then choose to still want to have a relationship with me because some people some people don't and yeah that also brings us into yeah vulnerability and i wrote down real vulnerability yeah um because you know, vulnerability can be something which is very can be I was processing this today and I was in the gym and I was thinking about vulnerability and how performative it can be it can be very performative it can be something which in the past I I can be performative in my vulnerability I've I've you know written a whole abundance of of poems and you know songs and and pieces of art created these different pieces that it, it's performative it kind of shows vulnerability through the lens that i want to show you vulnerability i want to show you my vulnerability this way ashanti i don't want you to see my vulnerability this way because that might be me actually being genuinely really vulnerable and there's a way of like packaging up vulnerability into like a nice way to kind of share mm -hmm. with somebody you know so that they can receive it and so that it's you know palatable and that it's nice and easy to accept and you know work with um whereas when i say real vulnerability i'm talking about you know those tears when those tears will not stop flowing and you know i'm at the the oof, i don't know many people who've seen me there <laughs> i don't know many people who've seen me there you know when i'm at when i'm at the the lowest of the low and it's only myself and you know my belief in myself and you know, my, my courage to kind of rebuild the pieces that allow me to kind of get back to to where I need to be. So yeah, real real vulnerability, real vulnerability as opposed to performative vulnerability. That was a distinction that I kind of made today. I wanted to get that one down. And then we also have, oh, we also have sexuality as well. And sexuality is just something which, yeah, something which I've been just processing and thinking about in terms of like, just the the awkwardness that can come up around those type of conversations around sex and the sexual nature and thinking of myself as a hip-hop artist and a, you know a hip-hop lyricist and a hip-hop music producer and a hip-hop dancer and thinking about the nature of hip-hop music and the conversations I've had to have with people to let them know that hip-hop is not you know hip-hop was not created as something to disrespect women or it's not created as something to disrespect you know certain groups of people but there are messages that come through our music there are words that are used that can be taken down a certain route that aren't the full picture that aren't the full picture and i often find myself having to combat or battle with people not much anymore but i remember you know when i was younger having to combat with people when i first started getting into hip-hop was like 
you know, people are like, oh, all of that stuff's just about disrespect and drugs and, you know, women and, and womanizing and all that type of stuff. And I was like, it's a lot more than that, you know, it's yeah. a whole lot more than that. And the type of hip hop that we kind of gravitate towards, I guess, says a lot more about us than it does about the whole culture and consciousness of hip hop. So there's a, there's a whole lot of music. I was just listening to The Roots and listening to Common and listening to Talib Kweli and listening mm. to a few artists who you know, who embody, you know, embody certain principles which are not about mm. all of that type of stuff, you know. And um yeah, 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 yeah. So thank you. Thank you for that. I I really like the way you nuance the real vulnerability context because I think that is something that I am thinking about oftentimes. Like I'm because I'm making these episodes and I'm talking to many people and the expectation is that we're sharing our mask. Like I don't want to be like just interviewing you about your mask, that wouldn't be a conversation. And then I wonder like, oh, but I'm always talking about my mask. Like I'm always, and how vulnerable am I able to be every episode? That all doesn't feel like, like it's like, it's, I'm, like I'm putting, like I'm trying to like either dampen how much I can be vulnerable or like, am I doing too much, right? And I think those are the questions I, I think about as I'm in these conversations. And so, like oh okay this is this is this is what I can talk about right here because it's it's an, it's enough and I think we're all even in this conversation it's like we're meeting each other for the first time but also we're we're under the understanding that this is going to be shared with the world so it's kind of like okay well how much can I really talk about in a, a safe way because it needs to be safe for you and it be safe for me right and that is also some of those interesting moments that we're trying to like show in this context of the podcast but also help men around the world see that you're not alone like yeah you may not have a conversation with somebody on on a podcast but are you having real conversation with somebody in person when it's just you two having a conversation or are you just as guarded when if you were like showing the world as if you were talking to one person intimately in a conversation where you could actually build connection. And I think that's what I'm, our, our hope with these conversations do for other people is say, you know, you may not be willing to do this in a platform like this, but when you have a conversation with a friend, do you get real? Do you have mm. a moment of real vulnerability or are you, are you like sh masking the mask? of the mask and take off the mask, but there's another mask on top of the taking off of the mask. Right. It's like, how often do you find have, or do you have someone in your life that you can actually be real with? I think I'll share this. And then I'm, I'm thinking about, I want to make sure I respect the time. Cause I want to make sure that we get uh, the one thing I was talking about with a, with a pastor at the, at the church I go to yesterday, we were, I was checking out a, a building and he was, we were just talking. And as a, as a statement that I put here, I'm going to have just two of them right now. My work is my value. And then I wrote proud not to be prideful. <laughs> so I think my work is mm. my value. Like I think I have operated under this context about works that in order for me to, to receive, like, I don't know, obviously I don't have the, I, I can't figure it out what the words. Let me say it like this. Um, I have often felt like my works my, that working hard, was my badge of honor, mm. not who I am, but mm. the fact that I'm a hard worker, the fact that I work hard, the fact that I work real hard, the fact that I'm always busy. I think those are things that started in childhood that still carry me today. This idea that my value, if I'm, if I'm sitting around hanging out, doing nothing, I feel like I'm being lazy. Even if I'm actually just resting, which is needed in order to be, a person who works as hard as I work, but I oftentimes don't talk much about rest. I'm trying to do better about talking about rest because I need, I've been, I've been finding myself getting close to burnout. I know it, I can feel it. And I'm also still in that back of my mind. Like, dude, you've been laying on this couch for like three hours. You better be do. you better do something. Even though I'm supposed to be on vacation, I'm supposed to be resting. I'm still like of this mindset that no, no, this is, this is this is gonna everything's gonna fall apart if you don't get back to the 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 work and I think that mm. that has been how I've been carrying how I carry how I've, how I've lived from from being a kid you know 
five, six years old, remembering stopping, not cleaning, not working, not helping around the house, not doing this, anything I'm not doing. It was not, it was not good. And so, and those are old stuff, right? You're like, dude, you were six, you were seven, you were 10 years old. Why are you still carrying that stuff? I wish I could just drop it. I wish I could be like, unplug it. If I can unplug, you know, and maybe I don't really want to unplug it because it's how I'm able to connect with the work that we do. But I think some of the things is like, I, they don't serve anymore. Some of those, mm. the, some of the, the formulas I was using for survival then, I don't need anymore, but sometimes they're hard to disconnect. They're hard to disconnect. So that's, um. I, I just heard this yesterday. I just wrote this sentence down. I mean, I just had this thought in my mind yesterday, like in a real way. So I'm still processing it, but that's the, something I'm going to be working on for a couple of, probably the rest of this month in my writing and my journaling, like to disconnect my work from my value. Cause mm -hmm. currently it's directly connected. It's, it's directly connected, you know? So yeah, that's, that's it. I'll stop right there. Thank you for sharing that, man. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. Commend you. Yeah. That's, that's, and I, I, I relate to that. I relate to that. And um, it's something that I have to consistently think about and process also. So as you shared that, I've also, yeah, yeah, I've reflected on my own process when it comes to work and it comes to projects I involve myself in and just disconnecting, disconnecting from detaching, mm -hmm. detaching from the outcome of something that is not directly correlated with who I am. It is its own separate entity, its own separate thing. No. Thank you. Thank, thank you for sharing that. That's helped me understand my own process a little bit better. Well, you know, I ultimately know that we got a late start and getting this started, but I, I want to respect your time. I, I think we're going to have to have another conversation. I think we're going to, we're going to have another conversation period, but I think even more so, you know, I, I was telling somebody the other day, I've never been to London and I've been like, I've been yeah. wanting to go. I, I want to go when it's not raining, you know? So if you can... <laughs> Don't come now. <laughs> Don't come now. Because <laughs> literally, if I, yeah, if it's raining, right? Yeah, yeah let's, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> let's schedule gonna, something. Gonna, man. Let's schedule something. <laughs> well, somebody said, oh, you never going to come then because you, you always need to be prepared for some rain. But I would love to come and I would love to visit and I would love to, like, you know, uh, connect because that would be a great uh, opportunity to see uh, the world, more of the world, you know? So we, we to be continued. Definitely. To be continued. Yeah, this is not yeah. done. We're not we're not done here. Is there anything you want to say or any of the last piece you want to just say to folks? I mean, uh, we'll we'll let them know where they can follow you for to learn what work you, what projects you're working on. But just in general, is there anything else about these masks you want to share before we close up? Yeah, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity, man. Just want to say thank you for the opportunity to create something like this. It's you know leading up to the podcast, fighting the year like this has been something which. I'm glad. I'm really, really glad I'm doing. I think it's something which is like, it's allowing me to move out of that performative vulnerability that I spoke about. I really just be live in spaces, in conversations where that real vulnerability can just come through. And I don't have any time to rehearse or practice what I'm going to say. You know, I don't know where the conversation is going to go. We're just here <laughs> having this conversation, just flowing with it, just flowing with where the energy is going to go. And that, yeah, that's, that's, um, that's his own reward. It's not comfortable. It's not like, it's not comfortable. It's not um, easy, but it's definitely super rewarding, you know, super, super rewarding. And this is the type of stuff that, that moves me, you know? And I guess I'm, I'm consistently searching for those type of relationships, those type of connections, those type of spaces. And yeah, I'm glad to have found yeah, glad to have found the inside circle. Glad to have connected with you. Glad to be doing this work, man. Glad to be doing this work. Thank you, thank you for thank you for being open to it. Whenever it came to you, like you know, like it was amazing. Like when things come, they say when the when the student is ready, the teacher will come. Right. So, thank you for being ready for whenever these opportunities and moments. Like oh, maybe that's a. You know, and sometimes we're not we're not ready for it or we can't see it because we're so many other things are in our in our in our vision. So thanks for being there. Thanks for sharing your story, which helped me see your story, which had me reach out to you. So all the things that happened along that that could have just not made this connection happen. I appreciate you for for being in the in the moment. So 
Listen, um, will you let folks know um, how they can follow you if you want them? Like what the, you mentioned, music. What? What? How can they learn more about your work? Um, and we'll we'll add all this in the show notes for people to find you. Yeah, so people can follow me on Instagram at Still Solomon So that's S T I double L Solomon's S O L O M O N S So uh, Still Solomon So. Um, you'll find my music on there. You'll find just my creativity. You might find a poem or two. Um, and I'm currently, yeah, by the end of this week, my company shall be registered. Uh, Movement Makers, which is a youth empowerment company empowered, set up to empower young people um, across the UK, within schools, within youth organisations youth centers all these types of things and just working with them to support them to have these type of conversations that we've had today um yeah yeah and to just see them shine to see their brilliance expand you know i believe that the next generation are our leaders you know what i mean the next generation are our leaders so supporting them assisting them with their step into leadership mm. oh yeah that's at movement maker so that's m-o-v Three in place of the E, Ment Makers, M E N T Makers. Let's yeah. do it. However, we can support your work. And I would love to talk to you more about that because that's, you know, that's where my passion is. And so, whatever I work, however, I work can serve you and your, and your next adventure, let us know for sure. Yeah. That'd be amazing, man. I'd appreciate uh, maybe that's when, appreciate maybe that's why I'm coming to UK. I'm going to come to UK and do a, do a, do a workshop. Maybe we're going to bring the Million Mask movement to the UK. There we go. There we go. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do go. It. All right. Hey, we've, we've, we've declared it. We've declared it. It's, it's happening, bro. It's, it's happening. already happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, brother, have a great rest of your day. And uh, so thankful for you. Thanks for being a part of this conversation. Thank you, Ashanti. I appreciate you, man. Hey, folks, Solomon and I, we shared our mask here publicly, but you don't have to share yours publicly. You can go to millionmasks.org. Show your mask anonymously. And maybe if you create it anonymously, you will find one of those people in your life that you may be willing to share it with. So Solomon, again, thank you for being here today, brother. And um, we'll see you soon. Appreciate you, bro. Peace. Peace now. The Taking Off the Mask podcast is produced by Ryan Louie and graphics by Kelly Wong. Guests are managed by Dan Paloma and the podcast is edited by Samuel Matingo. We'd like to thank everyone who's been a part of the creation of this podcast. And for every guest that has been a part of the show, you are now a part of the Taking Off the Mask family. The Taking Off the Mask podcast is brought to you by the Ever Forward Club. And if you like what you've heard today, please subscribe, write a five-star review, and share this with someone. We look forward to having more conversations that matter. And please remember, there is more to you than anybody can see by just looking at you.